Hello everyone, Ace here, and today we have another Ace Impressions, this time having a look at Shadow Man Remastered. This game came out just fairly recently on both GOG.com as well as Steam. So, let's go ahead and load into it, but first you may be wondering what exactly this game is, and well, actually, the easiest way for me to describe it is it is an M-rated Metroidvania style game with that is in third person, so... An interesting little idea, I would say. Um, but yeah, very much definitely M-rated. The original game came out in 1998. We'll just deal with these guys here real quick. As you can see, it earns the M rating. We have to take these guys while they're staggered, or else they'll regain a lot of their health. Alright, he's down. That's good. And like I said, yeah, Metroidvania style games, so you collect items, uh, backtrack between various areas that you've explored, all that good stuff. And... You, it is also a collect-a-thon, so you collect these items called Dark Souls, yes, and you use those to power your character up and make his weapons more powerful, things like that as well. And you get new items that allow you to unlock more areas of the existing parts of the map that you've explored, hence why you have to backtrack. It is actually a pretty good formula, in my opinion. I've already uh, spent about six, six or seven hours, as you can tell from the game save, just playing the game and having a good time. It is a very dark game with uh, voodoo elements all around. And if I remember correctly, it's also based on a comic book. I believe, yeah. So... I will say this, I have not read the Shadow Man comics, although this remaster does come with uh, a comic that's uh, about 40 pages or so, so that might be another reason to potentially acquire the game. Now, later on, from what I understand, you can actually get an ability that allows you to walk on lava, but we don't have that right now, so instead, we'll have to avoid that and just go around the other way. Um, Alright, so we'll just head up here. And we will go back, and I'll show you some of the other abilities that I have actually unlocked at this point. Now, you can, of course, climb the rope there. Although, also, you have to... <clears throat> the, another thing about this game is uh, your items can impact your ability to climb stuff, so you have to sometimes put them away, which is a neat-ish little feature. It does make sense, at least. Alright, so we do get magical items that such as the Asan Flambeau and the Baton that we've already got equipped. So I can show that off as well. These take up magical energy, but they are an effective little way to deal with some of the enemies here. As I'm getting shot by these flying types. Fortunately, this is not like in, for example, uh, this is not like in Goldeneye where the enemy, where the dying enemies, uh, the bad guys can shoot through them, but you can't. You can actually plaster your way right through once one of the enemies is in a death animation. No problem. Okay, so we seem to be decent on health. We'll kill these fish things that... Well, you know exactly what these kinds of enemies are. They're annoying, and they need to go. Now, the lock-on does work. It's just these things are just fast enough that it can make targeting them a little bit tricky. So, we do have a first-person aim mode, if necessary. Although, I'm not very good at it, because this is, once again, in a controller, and I mainly play using mouse and keyboard. Although, mouse and keyboard does seem to run relatively well for the most part on this game, I will say. But given that it is, uh, given the genre, it does make sense, in my opinion, to play this as a 
controller game. Okay, we got him. And yeah, as you can tell just now, you can actually... One of the items I picked up allows me to climb up the blood fall, falls, as they're called. So that's good. But yeah, this game... I mean, I'm not showing you the puzzles, admittedly, because I'm just uh, going through an area I've already largely dealt with. But you could probably tell it is promising, certainly. Uh, it is right now, by the way, the price of this game is $20 full price, but it is right now on sale for the next two or so days, at the time of this video, for the low, low price of $15 instead. So the big question is whether or not it is worth your time. And I think it is, actually, for what it's worth. It is a very lengthy game. It is a very Labyrinthian game, too, I should mention. Now, the original game did have a map, a physical printout map, uh, that it came with. This version does not have it, unfortunately. But that appears to be partly due to the fact that, well, they have added an extra room or something, from what I've seen. So that could be a large part of the reason. The map is just simply out of date. Still, it would be nice to have more documentation with this game. Uh, they do actually... You do actually have a menu or a description of sort in-game of what your various items do. For example, you have the prophecy cards, which show you your various abilities that you can unlock. So yeah, there is that. But yes, ultimately this, well, I haven't, like I said, I haven't shown you any of the puzzles because I've gone through this area already. But I think you do have a basic idea of what to expect with this game. I will say this, it is a, some of the levels can be rather grimdark too. Uh, once you get to the asylum area. Ooh. There is also good enemy variety as well, I should mention. Although the enemies are area-specific. Okay, so it, this calls for us to... There we go. I've also noticed that more enemies spawn in sometimes uh, than when you first go through an area, so they probably do that to mix it up as well. Alright, so we got that all squared away. Now we can do a fast travel as well, so you can always easily go from one point of a of the overworld map to another if you really need to. And it is kind of necessary anyways. But uh, yeah, is this game worth your time for the $15 asking price? I would have to say yes. It is. It is a good little time for what it is. It you. This is also one of those games where you can expect to get lost a few times playing it, but that's also, I suppose, by design and part of the point. There we go. Alright. There we go. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just save, and that should about do it. Uh, yeah, so this has been Ace with Shadow Man Remastered. Is it worth the $20 asking price at full price? Yes, so it is also, in my opinion, therefore, worth the $15 asking price that it is now that it's on sale. It's definitely a game worth picking up. Um, if you're into a darker themed style game, definitely pick this one up. So, yeah, this has been Ace. I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. A sound.